Oh, hey, looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh, thanks. Uh, hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? Oh, no. I, I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? Yeah, I mean, I don't even understand it myself. But with you helping me, I might actually learn something. That and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. And just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me, have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True, but what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet! Hold your horses there. I'm not really sure I've laid anything anywhere just yet. But aren't you the one who brought it up? Ah, it's you. How's it going? Any developments to report? You mean with my power? Not really, no. Hmm. Perhaps using it regularly won't be enough to provoke growth. Good to know. <sighs> hey, I thought you said you weren't interested. I mean, how many times are you gonna come ask me if anything's changed before you're happy? Weren't you the one so keen on piquing my interest? I only wanted to check how that was going. If you don't think it's possible, just tell me and I'll stop asking. Okay, yeah, it's definitely not happening. What? But this was all your idea! How cruel of you to stoke my excitement only to back out at the first sign of adversity. Come on, just keep trying a little longer. How about this? Describe the circumstances in which you first awaken to your power. Maybe we can reproduce the situation and see if lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, I was staring death in the face when it happened. I'd been beaten so badly I could barely stand. But I kept telling myself I wasn't ready to die yet. Then, out of nowhere, it just... 
came to me. Hmm. I suppose we shouldn't try to recreate those conditions. Nobody wants a dead officer on their hands. Let's consider some other potentially relevant factors. Who was your opponent? Where did the struggle take place? What time of day was it? Do you think your emotions played any part in it? I was fighting the Ashen Demon of all people. I'm sure we could arrange another sparring session. As for the when and where, we were in a forest, at night, and pretty sure it was a full moon too. And that leaves my emotional state. But I don't know how I could replicate the intense emotions of being at the brink of death like that. I see, I see. That context would prove quite tricky to simulate. And if your power functions similar to a crest, revealing itself even when you don't intend it... That leaves only one option. Observing you on the battlefield at all times. Ugh. This is turning out to be more work than I signed up for. Hey, weren't you telling me not to give up just a second ago? If I can do it, then so can you. Hmm. I'm not so sure. So in the end, it seems we're no closer to unveiling the truth about your powers. You can say that again. At this rate, the war will be over and done with by the time we make any headway. That would admittedly be cause for celebration, at least. Your power, like that of a crest, is undoubtedly meant to be wielded as an instrument of war. And as the tides of battle recede, your chances of encountering a life-or-death situation grow slimmer and slimmer. Therefore, you'll be forced to use your power less and less often. And that's probably for the best. Why is that such a good thing? Because we still don't know enough about its effects, both during and after its use. You know, they say even a hero's relic wielded by its corresponding crest bearer will still drain a portion of that person's life. It's reasonable to suspect your power could have a similar impact on both your body and mind. Hey, you're starting to scare me here. Honestly, I was just planning on going back to being a regular old mercenary after the war ends. Can't really imagine life without a blade in my hand, you know? I should have guessed. I imagine your expert services will be in high demand even once the conflict is over. In fact, Edelgard herself seemed keen on asking you to settle down in Imbar to support the Empire. Really? Not that I'm not flattered, of course, but putting down roots isn't really my thing. No, I suppose not. Though I have to admit, it would put my mind at ease to have you by my side once this is all over. You want me by your side? Would you care to elaborate on that? Consider the possibilities. A seemingly unarmed attendant who's able to produce a sword in the blink of an eye. It would be a great crime deterrent, don't you think? You prove quite handy on my travels. <laughs> I figured that's what you meant. A pure Linhart answer if I've ever heard one. But how's that any different from a regular bodyguard? Seems like you could just hire one of those and be done with it. Maybe so. But I don't want to be spending the rest of my life with a random bodyguard, do I? Oh, hold on. What? Oh, well, look at the time. It seems I've forgotten an urgent matter I need to attend to. Bye for now. Wait, Linhard! Come back!
Oh, hey, looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh... Thanks. Hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? Oh, no. I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? I mean, not really. But I would have at least expected you to ask about it by now. That and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. Just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me, have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True. But what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet. Hold your horses there. I'm not really sure I've laid anything anywhere just yet. But aren't you the one who brought it up? It's you. How's it going? Any developments to report? You mean with my power? Not really, no. Hmm. Perhaps using it regularly won't be enough to provoke growth. Good to know. Hey, I thought you said you weren't interested. I mean, how many times are you going to come ask me if anything's changed before you're happy? Weren't you the one so keen on piquing my interest? I only wanted to check how that was going. If you don't think it's possible, just tell me and I'll stop asking. It's too soon to say, really. Right, of course. We'll just have to keep trying then. How about this? Describe the circumstances in which you first awaken to your power. Maybe we can reproduce the situation and see if lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, I was staring death in the face when it happened. I'd been beaten so badly I could barely stand, but I kept telling myself I wasn't ready to die yet. Then out of nowhere, it just came to me. Hmm, I suppose we shouldn't try to recreate those conditions. 
nobody wants a dead officer on their hands. Let's consider some other potentially relevant factors. Who was your opponent? Where did the struggle take place? What time of day was it? Do you think your emotions played any part in it? I was fighting the Ashen Demon of all people. I'm sure we could arrange another sparring session. As for the when and where, we were in a forest at night. Pretty sure it was a full moon, too. And that leaves my emotional state. But I don't know how I could replicate the intense emotions of being at the brink of death like that. I see, I see. That context would prove quite tricky to simulate. And if your power functions similar to a crest, revealing itself even when you don't intend it... That leaves only one option. Observing you on the battlefield at all times. Ugh... This is turning out to be more work than I signed up for. Hey, weren't you telling me not to give up just a second ago? If I can do it, then so can you. Hmm, I'm not so sure. So in the end, it seems we're no closer to unveiling the truth about your powers. You can say that again. At this rate, the war will be over and done with by the time we make any headway. That would admittedly be cause for celebration, at least. Your power, like that of a crest, is undoubtedly meant to be wielded as an instrument of war. And as the tides of battle recede, your chances of encountering a life-or-death situation grow slimmer and slimmer. Therefore, you'll be forced to use your power less and less often. And that's probably for the best. True. The less reason to unleash this on the world, the better. You know, they say even a hero's relic, wielded by its corresponding crest-bearer, will still drain a portion of that person's life. It's reasonable to suspect your power could have a similar impact on both your body and mind. Hey, you're starting to scare me here. Honestly, I was just planning on going back to being a regular old mercenary after the war ends. Can't really imagine life without a blade in my hand, you know? I should have guessed. I imagine your expert services will be in high demand even once the conflict is over. In fact, Edelgard herself seemed keen on asking you to settle down in Imbar to support the Empire. Really? Not that I'm not flattered, of course, but putting down roots isn't really my thing. No, I suppose not. Though I have to admit, it would put my mind at ease to have you by my side once this is all over. You want me by your side? Would you care to elaborate on that? Consider the possibilities. A seemingly unarmed attendant who's able to produce a sword in the blink of an eye. It would be a great crime deterrent, don't you think? You'd prove quite handy on my travels. You should really pick your words more carefully, Linhart. You almost gave a gal the wrong idea there. Perhaps that idea is exactly what I intended. Hold on, what? Oh, well, look at the time. It seems I've forgotten an urgent matter I need to attend to. Bye for now. Wait, Linhart, come back! It seems I'm alone. Are you here, little one?
Aw, were you waiting for me? You're a good kitty, aren't you? Guess who brought you some fish? Hey, easy there, no need to wolf it down. Wow! Oh, you want more? Well, just stay put while I... Edelgard? Oh, fascinating. I never imagined I'd run into you in a place like this. Linhart, uh, um, this is a surprise. What are you even doing here? I was having a nap over there. Such is the price for pulling so many all-nighters. Though I pay it gladly. Over there as in, right? Over there? Immediately so? Does that mean you saw... Ow! Well, well. A cat. Does it live here? How should I know? I've certainly never seen it before this very moment. Really? Because it seems quite used to you. Yes, it... Uh, oh, come out with it already. If you have something to say, just speak and stop this interminable dance. No, no. In fact, I like cats as well. Especially ones that live near people. You, a cat person. I never thought I'd hear you say that. Why not? I find them charming. You have to admire the way they draw people in with their cuteness only to be waited on hand and foot. Lenhard, people don't take care of cats just because they're cute. Cats rid us of rodents and other vermin. They are fine pets who bring much solace to their owners. As I see it, people and cats have a good relationship because we do things for each other. Well, I wonder how the cats see it. Because it appears to me that they're just doing things their way and don't really care about anyone else. Now there's a charmed existence. Live as selfishly as you like and have people lavish you with praise and affection for it. Not to mention they'll never run out of food. Which just shows how much people value them. What does it matter if they're being selfish? To be honest, I'm surprised you have an opinion about cats at all. Have you owned one previously? Because I could use your advice if so. Please, do I look like the sort of person to take on that kind of responsibility? You do not, hence my surprise. Ah, uh, wait, now I get it. I was wondering why you were being so cross with me. You're thinking about keeping this cat. But the implication that cats and I both want to lead the same easy life spoils the idea for you. What? I mean... <sighs> yes, that's it. You've caught me. Linhart, listen. If you aspire to be a pet, that is your decision and yours alone. However, if you expect people to bend over backward for you, the least you can do is work for it. The problem with you is that you always... Please, Your Majesty, let's not do this now. Look, the kitty cat wants you to snuggle wuggle. Another clear victory for the Empire in battle. You can surely guess who stole the show yet again. Our mercenary friend? Always a force upon the battlefield, that one. Their approach on the battlefield is exceptional. Yet their curious power has also proved quite the boon. It is deeply fascinating, isn't it? Something beyond the principles of magic, and yet different from the power of crests. I might go so far as to say it veers close to the realm of dark magic, but I fear that's beyond my expertise. I am possessed of some small knowledge, yet still fail to understand the nature of that power. Then at present we can do nothing but throw our hands to the sky, and with that, I must be off.
Oh? I thought you would be more curious about our mercenary ally. Would you truly raise the white flag merely because the matter lies outside your usual ken? What are you playing at, Hubert? If you want me to investigate a specimen, go ahead. Hook it and reel it in. Aha, but you are the better angler of the two of us. Furthermore, my method of hooking would complicate our relationship with so valued an ally. An inducement from your lips would ensure things proceed more smoothly. Well, this is becoming a hassle. Can't you push yourself to learn some new hooking strategies? Like, I don't know, one befitting the elegance of a true nobleman? Involving fancy tea, perhaps. A positively hair-raising notion. Please, do not speak it aloud again. Then maybe get in their face and pick a fight with them. You two could end up becoming fast friends. So you wish me to shout myself hoarse and swing my fists about like a common ruffian? I shall pretend I did not hear that suggestion. No. Then the only option left is aggressive persuasion. Driven home at the point of an axe, let's say. Linhart, who in the world are you talking about right now? I should think there is no one quite so barbarous in our own army. Hmm? Oh, I didn't have anyone particular in mind. I was just brainstorming new methods to ensnare our illustrious mercenary friend. Why? Did they remind you of acquaintances of ours? <sighs> In any event, let us leave this sleeping dog where it lies. I do not dislike conversing with you, but we seem to procure results of little benefit when we do. And with that, I have matters to attend to and must be off. Farewell. Until next time, Hubert. So when can I expect you to have reeled in our mercenary friend? I suspect we'd make headway on the research if we engaged in it together. I'm afraid I've not the time to play along with your capricious whims, Linhart. I will, of course, be cheering you on with some enthusiasm from the shadows as you hook the subject yourself. Hmm. Yes, that looks right. Why, hello, Linhart. It is not often I find you drawing outside. I'm not drawing. I'm simply trying to capture this wyvern's form. See? It's resting on that hill over there. Ah. An extraordinary sight indeed. Now then, let us see what you have done so far. I must say, it feels as though something is lacking in your work. Uh, how can I describe it? Your depiction is almost too accurate. Uh, take these scales, for example. Why, they could have been plucked from the very wyvern itself. I told you this isn't art. I'm doing it for my research. And when conducting research, it's always best to have precise references. The same is true when dealing with numbers or gathering information. I see. So you value accuracy above all else. Right. Honestly, I've never quite understood art anyway. So I'm perfectly content leaving that sort of thing to the true creatives. You know, the quirky ones. People like Bernadetta. Even so, there may come a day when your work is seen as the craft of a master artisan, when such precision is lauded as the height of aesthetic genius. What makes you say that? Oh, merely a passing thought. Perhaps in the distant future, connoisseurs will value accuracy and attention to detail over the magnificent interpretive pieces we hold dear today. Do you really think that'll happen, though? I doubt people will ever stop appreciating the ancient classics. 
You certainly have always done so. Yes, there is no denying that. But I fear my own personal inclinations hold little sway over public opinion. Nobody knows what trends may arise in the decades and centuries to come. So I can indeed envision a future in which accurate depictions are praised just the same as the greats of old. And I encourage you to do the same, my friend. I don't get it. How are you so optimistic all the time? It's like you're constantly looking toward the future. I could say quite the same about you. I have always believed you to be rather forward-thinking. That's not optimism, though. All I'm thinking forward to is the time when I can just sleep the days away. That's why I'm forcing myself to be as active as I can now. Regrettably, those halcyon days of slumber are still but a distant dream. I have much work for you, both now and further down the road. To begin with, might I ask you to paint my portrait? For the last time, I'm a researcher, not an artist. Are you sure you want such a faithful depiction? That is exactly what I want. How else would my yet unborn descendants know the true visage of the great Ferdinand von Eyre? Indeed, I would be proud to submit myself as a subject of your research. Consider it a study in the personification of nobility itself. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. I'm fine drawing you, but I don't have the slightest modicum of interest in actually researching you. Though, I do sometimes wonder where you get all that unabashed confidence from. Linhart, come on! This is no time to be snoozing! <sighs> really, Kaspar? It's not even midday yet. Uh, we're well into midday, Linhart. Yes, but the warm rays of the sun and gentle cooling breeze have utterly enraptured me. So on that note, it's back to sleep. I'm gonna rip that blanket right off you. Now get up, because I found something amazing! How many times in my life have I heard that from you, only to find the truth considerably less engaging? Okay, first of all, not true. And second of all, this is way more amazing than all those other times. Hmm, I wonder. But very well, astound me. Look, someone took down that gigantic bear! I'd rather not look, thank you. I have little interest in witnessing blood and gore so early in the day. Ow, but it's already been cleaned and everything. Which means some open wounds will still be present, plus whatever blood was slopped about in the process. Fine, then don't look at that part. Just look at that terrifying face. I'd give anything to take out a monster like this. Then you should form a hunting party, set up traps, and proceed with your life's work. No, I don't want to hunt it. I want to take it down. Barehanded, barehandling, you know? I understand your fixation, but in all of Fodlan... Only my father could pull it off. Is that what you're going to say? Hey, I'm not going to be content being in his shadow forever. Rousing words, yet I seem to remember Count Burglies was still in the Academy when he brought down a bear and emerged unscathed. You're already older than he was then. Don't care, it's not too late. I'm gonna beat a bear, then I'm gonna get armor made that's just like my old man's. You said the same when we were young, then decided to drag me along for the ride. You took me through hill and dale in search of one, which made an absolute mess of my clothes and hair. And I had to treat your wounds every time you hurt yourself, though I did become quite adept at healing magic as a result. So, win-win, right? 
Plus, you helped me, which I very much appreciate. I suppose we'll call it a good thing and leave it at that. But perhaps a moratorium should be declared on such behavior for the time being? Yes, I think that would be best. A uh, more a tor Sorry, what now? Our focus should be on our enemies, not a bear. For this reason, I think it's best for you to put your dream on hold until the war is over. When peace reigns in you and we live in a world far better suited for free napping, I hope you can see your dream realized. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oh, and when that day does come, I will be happy to accompany you again. But for now, let's just focus on what is in front of us. Put the bear brawl on hold, got it. And hey, once I survive this war and get stronger, that bear will be a pushover. That's not... Actually, yes. I suppose the possibility of that isn't zero. Let's survive this war so all of our wildest bear dreams can come true one day. Time to find a good spot for a nap. <sighs> Bernadetta? Why are you skulking in the weeds? <laughs> no reason! Not getting in the way of two people's love at all! No, sir! Huh? But I'm alone here. I see <laughs> that. walking when I saw them. A man and a woman together in the woods getting... um... Hated. Well, neither of them seems to be dead yet. They're on a secret date, you dummy! Not fighting! <sighs> Regardless, how does two lovers stealing a moment alone lead to you curled up here in the fetal position? Try to get revenge on me! Relax. To them, you're no different than a pebble on the side of the road. Hey, I'm not a pebble! I mean, sure, sometimes I wish I was just a rock, but... Then just roll away quietly and you'll be fine. Just roll away quietly? Hey! Yeah! Wait, no! They'd see me! Stop trying to get me killed! We've made enough racket over here to raise the dead and they haven't even noticed. I think it's safe to say they're off in their own little world. Still, good for them, sharing words of love when either one could die tomorrow. Wait, they could die tomorrow? They're both soldiers who serve on the front lines. I doubt a rosy future awaits them. No! That's not true! Couples swearing their love and defying destiny are a staple of classic fiction! Sure, but the fact it wouldn't happen in reality is what makes it such a good story, right? Well, wait... But there are tons of stories where two people who have sworn their love don't ever meet again. Likely because that's something people are familiar with from their own lives. Okay, so which is it? I believe those two can be happy together, so they can, right? I hope that's the case, but reality is cruel. <sighs> anyway, I've talked myself right to sleep. Try that turn into a pebble and roll away quietly plan. <laughs> Bernadetta, what are you doing here? Uh oh, looks like I'm interrupting. 
I'll be going. Leonard, listen to me. <sighs> Remember the two people we saw out on a date here? Well, the guy died. Sadly, that sort of thing does happen. Another tragic love story for the books, I suppose. I really believed they'd live happily ever after, and... I can't take an ending like this. It's so awful. Perhaps so, but this is the result of the Empire choosing war. But I thought the power of their love for each other would see them through, safe and sound. You expect too much from love. Yes, there are instances where emotion allows the body to go beyond the bounds of what should be possible. But the effects are quite minor. It's certainly not going to bring the dead back to life. I know that, Linhard. I just think it's sad. I mean, don't you think it's sad? If pushed, yes, I would consider that to be sad. What is wrong with you? I didn't even know the man's name. Also, plenty of our enemies die, so why are we only sad for allies? Because they're, you know, our allies? I wouldn't want you to die, of course. That would make me quite sad. And I don't want to see you die either, Linhart. I'd cry even more if you died. Just the thought of it makes me... Makes me... <laughs> Oh dear, please don't cry over things that haven't happened yet. Oh no, that's what I'm doing. I'm so sorry, Linhart. It's fine, but to that point, let's just make sure you and I both survive this war together. If we can do that, what you said will have come true and I'll happily apologize. Um, apologize? Or what? For disputing the idea that two people's feelings for each other can help them overcome the risk of death. After all, the two of us surviving the war would refute any arguments I've made to the contrary. Oh, I get it. So you and me and the power of our feelings for each other could... Uh, wait, are... what now? All of this earnest conversation has me exhausted. Time for some sleep. <sighs> Again? Oh, don't you dare fall asleep on me now! If you do that, I'm leaving you here! <sighs> what a rest. Hmm? What's going on there? Is... is this really happening? Oh, my prayers have been answered! When I was about to die, your face floated into my mind, and then a miracle happened. It seems reports of his death in battle were greatly exaggerated. I'll have to let Bernadetta know. Although given her sensibility, she's as likely to think he's a ghost as she is to be happy about it. There you are, Lynn. Hmm? Oh, Dorothea. How unusual. I didn't expect to see you in a place like this. It's not unusual when I've been looking for you literally everywhere. You skipped out on the War Council meeting this morning and Aidy was livid. Yes, something came up that required pulling an all-nighter two nights in a row. So I had some sleep debts to repay. Next time, maybe spare a thought for the person who'll get stuck having to track you down. 
We discussed important matters in the meeting, you know. There was some kind of accident, and now we're experiencing a delay on supplies. And now we need to ration our food? It's a pain, but these things happen. In the worst case, we are supposed to be considering ways to forage for food ourselves, right? I suppose I can handle it if we need to fish, but I'll have to pass on tromping through the fields and mountains to harvest wild... whatevers. Wait, how do you know all this? You weren't even at the meeting, were you? Because I had someone who attended take notes for me. Wait... You had someone... More importantly, you should go to Her Majesty and propose a review of our supply logistics. Considering our current position on the front lines, we should break up the transportation of provisions along multiple routes. It may cost a little more to split things up, but it'll allow us to avoid situations like this. Overall, it should provide many benefits and the plan will be viable for use in future campaigns, too. Wow. <laughs> Dorothea? This sort of thing really gets your brain going, huh? Still, I wish you'd just go to the meetings and share all of these opinions. People would be thrilled at your resourcefulness, you know? Oh, I'm quite happy with things the way they are. Attending meetings would only add to my headaches. You can only run from this for so long, Lynn. And sure, I'll propose what you asked me to, but I'm going to do so in your name. Wait, are you serious? Oh, very much so. I couldn't possibly take the credit for something you thought up, right? I suppose that's fair. I can feel the headaches forming already. I've been looking for you, Lin. Here you go. Ah, the notes from the War Council this morning. Thank you. Say, why do you always ask me to do this now? Well, you know the situation, so it just makes it easier. Especially now that I've had more projects dropped on my lap. They're projects that you yourself proposed. Besides, your handwriting is beautifully legible. Your way with words makes the material quite easy to digest. Really, it's delightful. If you think I'm going to keep being your scribe just because you compliment me, think again. Hello, Dorothea. How good to see you recovered. Yes, I'm better now, thanks. The fever's all gone. Though, I'm way behind on everything because of it, so if you'll excuse me, I need to get caught up. Here. Are these... notes? Wait, did you take notes for me the whole time I was recovering? Yes, I summarized any essential information I thought you might need. War councils, scouting reports, that kind of thing. So, this is your handwriting? Like... Yours, yours. Why do you look so surprised? You do this exact same thing for me all the time. It's only natural that I'd step in for you during a time of illness. Huh. <laughs> you really are a strange guy. You know that? You never want to do anything that takes even the slightest effort, even when someone asks. And yet, you went to all this trouble for me. So, like I said, you're strange. And a little infuriating. If you say so. Personally, I think everything would be a lot easier if everyone behaved as I do. Actually, that would be great. Our war councils would take five minutes a day, tops. And be pointless. Most days, we'd probably just have an empty room because no one bothered to show up. Oh no, it would absolutely be like that. 
You know, I feel like I understand you a little better. Being understood sounds like a bother in its own right. Oh well, I suppose we'll cross that particular bridge when we arrive at it. <sighs> but for now, I'm afraid I'm quite tired. Of course you are. Well, since I'm all better now, why don't you go ahead and sleep on my behalf? I'll take care of things while you do. Better not. You're still recovering. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I found people to handle all your assigned work. So, take a day off and enjoy a long nap, alright? I wish you were this nice on a regular basis. But despite that, you do have your charms. Hmm? I'm perfectly happy lacking charms, so don't bother looking for weird new ones in me. <sighs> okay, seriously. Sand, rain, river? Is he writing of the weather? Are you alright, Petra? That's quite the noise that just came flying out of your diaphragm. Linhart, perhaps you can be helping me. This letter is giving me much difficulty. A letter, is it? I was under the impression that you had no trouble reading the language of Fodlin. I also had that thought, but this page is not making sense. Can you be reading it for me? What? Oh no, I couldn't. This is a private matter. I mean, I don't even know who it's from. But I cannot be writing back if I do not know what they are saying. Please, do this favor for me. Oh, very well. Let me have a look. Goodness, no wonder you struggled with this. It couldn't be more archaic. Right, well, let me give this a shot. <clears throat> Yon world is endless sand, and I but a parched grain air upon its bosom. Oh, beauty, was it the western wind which brought thee hither merciful rain? Soft, my river o'erfloweth. Hmm... Petra, is this a love letter? That is a possibility, but I do not have certainty. Okay, you definitely should have mentioned that before I started reading this. Well, too late now, I suppose. Indeed. I am blaming the letter. If no one can have understanding of it, the writer is a waster of paper. Well, it's not that I don't understand so much as... Look, let me just give this back to you. You have understanding? You must be teaching me. Oh, very well. The writer is using archaic speech to express his love for you through metaphor. So much so that I would say they have gone and spoiled the whole thing. So he has passion? Please, although I have little knowledge of the letter's writer. Really? From what he's written here, it sounds as if he sees you every day. Also, the letter is absolutely rife with mistakes. But take this passage, for example. I think he mentioned the western wind in an effort to evoke Brigid, but it's actually the southern wind that brings rain. Besides which, the merciful rain is a gift from the goddess. This paramour of yours shouldn't be tossing such sacrilegious comparisons about. And I won't even ask how a grain can be parched, let alone turn into an overflowing river. The words have richness and color. I wish I could be reading them as well as you. Trust me, it's nothing special. Well-crafted writing has layers. This just has apostrophes. So, are you planning to write him back? This has been a most painful lesson of how little I am knowing. I must be reading many books to study the old speech of Fodlin before making my reply. 
I sure hope she doesn't plan on writing him back in the same style, or they're going to end up talking right past each other. Goodness, I slept too much. A little fishing ought to snap me right awake. I am hearing you, Linhart. Apparently so. Care to fish with me? Ah! Or what watery expanse whilst our hooked morsel fly? What pricing denizen dost thou... The... Nay, thou! Dost thou be intending to make thy quarry? Um... In days of yore, I oft partooketh of the angler's art. Yea, forsooth, I was being quite adept. But in this place, thou art knowing thy waters better. Mayhap thou art being my guide? Eh? Oh, that is wonderful. Is this about that love letter? You did say you were going to study up on the old speech. I was wondering why you were assaulting me with so many bees and bows. Fordland's old tongue gives me much more difficulty than the young one. Absolutely. Most people struggle to even write that way, let alone speak it. I'm in awe of you, Petra. What you've done is very, very impressive. I bet you could scour the continent and only find a handful of people who can form such sentences. I mean, people haven't spoken that way since the goddess herself walked the land. So speakers of this style are rare? I have been trying with hardness to learn how to be speaking like everyone else in Fodlin. And now I am finding success, but in the wrong century. I think you should be proud. This only goes to show how much of an aptitude you have for languages. You're not even from Fodlin, and you can out thou the best of us. That's fascinating. Thou art extremely fascinating, Petra. <laughs> I am not understanding the funniness. Do the people of Fodlin truly never speak in this way? Usually only if they're a professional actor or trying to make a bit of a joke. But perhaps you're about to usher in a major comeback. In fact, I think we should schedule some time for you to coach me, Professor Petra. Me teaching you? <laughs> that idea is a wonderful one. You are usually teaching me so many things, and now I can be repaying the favor. It's almost a shame you've got your life mapped out as Queen of Bridget. You'd make a fine academic. I don't suppose I could talk you into it. An academic? Yes, a sort of professional scholar. It takes passion and, more importantly, luck. But you've got both. I do? Well, there's no question you're passionate and a hard worker, which just leaves the luck part. And I'd say you live a charmed life indeed if people are dropping you love letters in the middle of a war. Whatever happened with that, by the way? I gave him my rejection and will never be seeing him again. What? Really? I'm dying to know more, but... Listen... Just give the Academia thing some thought, all right? You'd be perfect for it. And he... <sighs> Hello, Hilda. What are you doing? Organizing our gear? <laughs> what does it look like? I know what it looks like. It just doesn't seem believable. But you working, I mean. You never do that. Well, the person who's supposed to be doing it is hurt. So I agreed to pitch in and help out. But you always have others do your work for you. 
Okay, slow down, pal. It's not like I run around asking people to take on work for me. I just let them do it if they want to. No matter the particulars of the process, the outcome is the same. Regardless, it's admirable of you to take the place of an injured comrade without begrudging them. Oh, and to be clear, I'm not here to help. I'm taking a well-earned break right now. Plus, you seem to have a handle on things yourself. I haven't even asked you to help yet. Not out loud, no, but your eyes tell a different tale. Actually, I was thinking that if you had time for chit-chat, you had time to lend me a hand or two. But even I'm not enough of a jerk to ask a guy for help when he's on a break. I am delighted you grasped the importance of rest. There are many out there who say the most unthinkable things on the subject. Oh, Lenhart, you're on break? Perfect. Then you can help me with this awful whatever that I'm doing. Do they even understand the concept of downtime? Or is every waking moment merely a chance to increase their own productivity? Break time is for breaks. <laughs> you're speaking my language on that one. Although to be fair, your life seems to be one permanent break. So I see why somebody might say that to you. Indeed. Sometimes they even claim I sleep too much, which is completely different from taking a break. Wait, how is sleeping not a break? Alas, how unfortunate. It appears you and I will not be able to reach common ground on this matter. Laying it on a bit thick, aren't you? That reminds me of something. Did I not see the injured comrade responsible for this storehouse hauling things at the goods depot this very morning? Sure did. He said he wanted to help me out, so I asked him to take over. At which point he promptly threw out his back and left this particular task to you. Yes, well, I now understand your reason for working. And with that, good night. Ugh, that guy really bugs me sometimes. It's like he thinks he's better than me or something. I think this goes here. Hello, Hilda. I see you're organizing the gear again. Not such a rare sight anymore, is it? Sadly for me, no. Why? Sad you lost a fellow lazy bones? Just so. Wait, really? Yes, but actually explaining it in detail will take far too much effort, so let's just leave it at that. Okay, now I'm extra curious. I know all about your dirty secret, you know. About how you actually take charge and work when there's no one else to step up. So why do you keep playing the I'm so lazy card all the time? I thought you of all people would understand this, Hilda. After all, are we not peers who work only when absolutely necessary? Even when you push your own work on someone else, you do so only after carefully assessing their situation. I told you I don't push work on people. I mean, sure, maybe I maneuver myself so they end up asking to help, at which point I leap at the offer. But I never actually ask. But I suppose you're right that I always assess the situation first. Previously, I said you and I would never be able to reach common ground. But now I see that I was mistaken. You're sure quick to change your mind when it suits you. 
I merely find it unfortunate seeing you working as you are now, when before you only ever did what was strictly necessary. If you've taken up the mantle of doing unnecessary work, it leaves me looking like the only idler. And? As such, I will offer you my assistance. Let's hurry up and finish here so we can rest that much sooner. Wait, but why? Just as I told you. It won't do me any good to be the only one not working around here. Still not following. I've grown terribly tired of talking. Must I explain? I mean, I'm not gonna force you to explain, but I sure wish you would. Oh, very well. But only because it benefits all parties involved. If you split your work with me, the work becomes easier. And by doing this easy work, I can then avoid being defamed as a common bed slug. If the pair of us both work a little more than before, things become easier for everyone. So let's both work hard together. A little. Um, all right. I mean, I, I guess that's good. Although I feel kind of like I'm being tricked somehow, so I'm not exactly happy about the whole deal. Yes, yes. Let's just get this done already so I can return to a life of ease. I'm already asleep. <sighs> hmm. I'm not certain this market is worth my time. Although the variety of sellers and goods is at least moderately impressive. Hey there, Linhart. It's not every day I see you out shopping. Oh, I thought I might happen across some good finds. And what brings you here, Leone? Same. This is the best place to get affordable daily necessities and hunting equipment and the like. I myself am looking for items that might prove useful to my research, but alas, I have come up empty. Yeah, but the best finds usually don't jump right out at you. You gotta dig a little, you know? How about this? You keep looking, and I'll pitch in and help look at the same time. No, I've had enough for today. I'm so tired. <sighs> you never change, Linhart. And I mean never. Well, I'm going to be here for a while, so if I find anything I think you might want, I'll grab it. Ooh, that looks interesting. But how will you know what I want when I haven't... Oh, never mind. Hey, Linhart. I found something good. Wait, I thought you were going to take a nap. It would have been rude to make you look while I enjoyed a moment of repose. So I decided to see if I could find anything you might enjoy. Wait, is that a mask? Indeed. It's an animal mask you wear like so. <laughs> okay, that looks just like the real thing, which makes it amazing on you. Is it really that amusing? I thought you could wear it hunting and confuse your prey into thinking you were one of their own kind. <laughs> yeah, I could probably. <laughs> no, stop! My stomach! This wasn't quite the reaction I envisioned, but I suppose you're finding it amusing is good enough in and of itself. Sorry, sorry. I'll take it hunting with me next time I go, I promise. Although I'll probably burst out laughing and scare off all the animals. <sighs> and what did you find for me? Oh, right! Check this out! Ta-da! At first I just thought it was a weird-looking statue, but apparently it's really old. Ah, I see. Yes, well, thank you. <laughs> Something about your reaction isn't sitting right. Is it not actually a good find? That I cannot tell without further investigation. But there's no denying it is a curious little thing. 
in any event, judging from its appearance... <laughs> okay, what's the deal? <laughs> I'm sorry. The statue is just so terribly amusing. <laughs> huh? Where are you going? And stop laughing! Hey, Linhart! Get back here! I can't believe Kaspar foisted this on me. I don't even think Leone would have a use for it. But I suppose it couldn't hurt to ask. Hello, Leone. Are you meeting someone? I'm meeting you. Per your request? Please don't tell me you forgot. Ah, that's right. I have something to show you. Wait, did you actually forget? Oh, who can say? More importantly, take a look at this. I don't need it and was going to throw it out, but then I thought, perhaps you might have a use for it. Throw it out? What a waste! I'll definitely take it. Truly? I suspected you might say that, but still... You gotta use things that are usable, after all. Despite the fact that it's been written on so much that it now has utterly fulfilled the destiny of all paper? Eh, there's still plenty of white space. And even if it was packed to the gills, it'd still make good kindling. In any case, if you don't need it, I'm happy to take it off your hands. Deal? Deal. All yours. Okay, now I gotta give you something in return. Let me see what I've got here. Well, looks like all I have is this dealie I picked up in the woods a couple days back. Thought it might make a good arrowhead, but it's too hard for me to flint that properly. That... that's a piece of an ancient relic. How did you even find such a thing? Yes, well, I will gladly take it. Incidentally, would you mind telling me where you picked it up? Wow, you really want this, huh? I do indeed, Leone. Why, this is a discovery worthy of canceling my afternoon nap. Somehow I doubt that's gonna happen, but... Well, I'm happy if you're happy. And you have done me a service as well, by taking an unneeded item off my hands. It's funny how stuff like this works out. One person's trash really is another person's treasure. That is because you and I are what I would call a special pair. Care to explain that? One might say the things that matter to us are completely opposed. Even among all of our comrades, you'll not find a pair more... Well, except for... Oh, and then there's... You know what? We aren't so special after all. You are a very strange man, Linhart. But special or not, our relationship is perfect for disposing of unwanted items. So let's keep it up. Sure thing, buddy. Not that I have any idea what you're asking me for at this point. Linhart, you skipped the War Council meeting again. If you have any pride at all as a noble, it would behoove you to start acting like one. I have pride. Some, at least. But speaking of noble comportment, we both already betrayed the Empire. Is there any need to be overly focused on details? Your tongue cuts like a thousand sharpened blades. Nonetheless, I did what was required for survival. My dream of regaining my family's status would be forever lost were I to perish, and I cannot permit such a thing to come to pass. All I do is for the sake of House Nouvelle's revival. That's lovely and all, but... It is not lovely! As the tale goes, House Nouvelle had passed down the crest of Macubal for many generations. Cease your endless yammering and listen to me! 
So I am forced to wonder why it is that you, a legitimate heir to the family, do not possess said crest. What's more, in its place you have the crest of Noah, who was one of the four apostles. Has your house stymied and deceived imperial investigations for generations? And if so, how? If you aren't going to listen to me, I refuse to even entertain answering that question. <sighs> well, I've grown tired of speaking, so we'll have to continue this another time. Good night. Wait, no. I'll answer you. Just don't treat me like dirt trodden underfoot. Then, by all means. Perhaps in the course of your explanation, something of use to House Nouvelle's restoration will crop up. I would like that very much. Well then... To be frank, it is said that Saint Noah is an ancestor of House Nouvelle. The Saint feared her crest, already rare even in her time, could prove a source of utter calamity. As such, she forged a magic that tricked Crest Investigation devices and aided her descendants. Fascinating. And is there anything else regarding Saint Noah? Your disdain is palpable. Now, does any of that sound of use to restoring my house or not? I cannot say. I must hear the rest first. You realize it would be bothersome in the extreme if I told you everything and none of it was helpful, yes? If you wish to hear more, I must have a guarantee it will provide something I can use. <laughs> what a bother. Ah, Constance, I have something I'd like to ask you. I can't imagine how a dullard like myself would be anything but a bother to one such as you. However, I'm happy to answer anything you need. Ah, perfect timing, Constance. I'd like to conduct a little experiment regarding the crest of Noah. If my useless body can somehow help, it is yours. Linhart von Hevering, where are you? something wrong, Constance? You seem quite upset. For crying out loud! There you are! I demand to know why you are always coming to my other side and engaging in all manner of questions and experiments. My secrets are being revealed one after another! Well, naturally, I prefer to deal with someone who's forthcoming with her answers. I am always forthcoming. Actually, I'm finding you a bit troublesome. <laughs> troublesome? What about me is troublesome? Explain yourself at once, you feckless cat of a man! It's... well... you know... No, I don't know! I'm answering whatever questions you throw at me, and that is the kind of mealy-mouthed, perfunctory response you deem fit to toss in my direction? I suppose that's a fair point. But do you really want me to dig into detail on the bothersome parts of your personality? Well, when you put it that way, it does sound like a discussion that would make me wroth. Which is why I think the world is better off with my mealy mouth response, as you so aptly put it. In that case, I shall let sleeping hounds lie. Good. And with that, farewell. Hold, Cretan! My agreeing to drop that particular matter does not also apply to your digging about in my personal affairs via my other mood. We must discuss terms of exchange. Terms of exchange? <laughs> is it not obvious? My other side is cooperating with your research, so you shall cooperate with mine. 
There's always demand for new magical experimentation subjects, after all. <laughs> and what sort of magic do you mean, exactly? Magic that makes one's eyes emit a dazzling golden light. <laughs> for the briefest of moments, I thought this might actually be interesting. Yes, well, all this talking has exhausted me, so perhaps we can take the matter up at a later date? Oh, I don't mind, but make sure you talk to me as I am now, understand? <laughs>